ordained. But they didn't. So when God chooses you, he chooses you. He chose you to do what he's called you to do. Amen. So that means you can't pass it off on somebody else. That, that means you can't hand the baton. No, you've got to do your part. You've got to do your part so that your purpose might be fulfilled in the whole entire plan of God. Amen. In the plan of God. Because remember, the plan of God is bigger than just your part. All right. So I want to, I want, I want to focus on Galatians. I'm going to, I'm going to use a few scriptures tonight. Um, but I want to focus on Galatians, the fifth chapter, and the first verse. And it, it simply says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Okay? And so, it just, it, 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 that scripture just helps us to kind of get our palate wet for what it is that God's going to do tonight. One of the things that the Lord began to deal with me about is that when he chooses us, we have to understand that there's suffering in the cup. So, so you got to stop asking God, why me? you got to get to this place and this position where you stop asking God, well, why me, God? Stop with all the questions, first off, and begin to listen. Begin to take heed to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. Amen? Because if you're living in a constant cycle of uncertainty, then you're too busy being worried about what you got to do instead of doing what you're supposed to do. All right? Because being worried about a thing will cause you to remain stagnated. Amen? Because you won't know which direction to go in. You, know, well, you won't know how to do it. You won't know how to go forward. But the spirit of the living God will lead you and guide you to all truths. Is that not what the word says? Yeah. Amen? And one of the things that the Lord began to show me is that sons and daughters of the living God, they know how to endure and address certain situations. We've got to face pain. We've got to face suffering. We've got to face loss at an early age. We've got to face abandonment issues. We've got to face violations and threats and all types of other uh, uh, abominations and things that might happen to us as we come up in God. Because what you got to understand is everything that has ever happened to you has brought you to this place now in God. You've got to know that every experience, good or bad, has brought you to a place now where you can stand firm, amen, on the word of God, amen, because he says whatever the enemy meant for bad, he'll turn it around and make it work for your good. See, some of y'all don't believe that scripture, you just quote it, amen, as a cliche. You quote it because, amen, it sounds good because it's easy to, easy to memorize, but there are some easy to memorize scriptures that come with power, amen, that have power, amen. One of the things that we've got to understand, amen, is that Christians and saints, amen, of the true and living God, amen, they endure their faith, amen, in God, amen, just like how the patriarchs of old had to do it, right? Because God decreed, amen, that they were more than conquerors and that they were fearfully and wonderfully made. And we now have to get in position, amen, because if we don't get in position, we'll begin to second guess God. Yes. And if you second guess God, you'll be fearful to move. And God doesn't want you to act all willy nilly when it comes to His will. I said willy nilly, yes, I did. Amen. It's like God choosing David over Saul. Come on, somebody. You can't be concerned about Saul's feelings, amen, if you're the David. All right? It's like God choosing Esther over Vashti. Amen. You can't be concerned. Because God chose Esther to deliver. Amen. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's like God, amen, choosing Abraham over Lot. Come on, somebody. God choosing Abel over Cain, amen. You can't get so mad, amen. See, folks will get upset with you, amen, when God chooses what you've provided for him and they'll try to slaughter you with their tongue. They'll try to do all kinds of manners of evil, but God said, amen, yeah. that he'll even make that work for your good. He said, if your way
question is, is that God chose you over somebody. So you ought to give God some praise. You ought to magnify the name of the Lord. Because each of them had their own personal test that they had to go through. My God. My God. In order to be chosen. Right? Yes. And they endure because the God of heaven promised I'll never leave you nor forsake you. See, these things that, that we say and we repeat and we recite, we're forgetting the power that, that they carry. We're, we're forgetting the, the anointing, the yoke-destroying anointing, amen, that comes with the word of God. Don't you remember the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone? But you can live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That means you can live off of the word. And not only that, but he says, I come that you might have life and have it what? More I'm telling you, say, see, you know the word. How come you're not applying it to your life? How come you're not walking in it and saturating yourself in it? Because when the attack of the enemy comes, the only things that's going to rebuff him is the word. The only thing that's going to send him running and fleeing, amen, is the word of God. The only thing that's going to cause him to back up off of you, amen, and to depart from you for a season is the word of God. Is that all right, somebody? And not only that, but God his people and to let them know, amen, that they endure, amen, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now that's for those that got the Holy Ghost, amen. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, I don't know what you got. It might be the Holy Ghost, but I pray that you get the Holy Ghost. I pray that you ask God for his infilling. I pray that you ask God for his presence. I pray that you ask God for the comfort that he said. If I go away, I go away to prepare a place for you. And I go away the Bible, amen, declares, amen, that we are more than conquerors, amen. And not only that, but it goes on to say, right, My God. that there are things that happen in our lives yes. that we have no control over, per se, right? And when God steps in, he begins to order our steps in a way. Let's deal with some of those things that God, that constantly bombard us. And I want to touch on a little bit of this because I know that there are some people that are tuning in through social media. And um, there are some things that the Lord laid on my heart that's happening in the belly of the church. That's happening, you know, in, 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 in the lives of people. And they're fearful to discuss it or they're fearful to, to bring it to the forefront. And they're fearful to talk about it and to address it. Um, they, they go on as if everything is okay. They come yeah. to church for 38 years. They sit in the pew and, 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 and they carry these things. And instead of grabbing a hold of faith to get complete deliverance from these things, amen, they just carry them and sweep it under the rug and sweep it under the rug and sweep it under the rug until they have a mountain, amen. And one of the things that the Lord dealt with me about is the spirit of abandonment. Amen. Um, I, I know this is kind of heavy, but he, he talked about the spirit of abandonment, which causes you to create a narrative in your head about how people perceive you. All right. It causes you to have a conversation with yourself in your own head, in your own mind, about how people perceive you. And those narratives are oftentimes erroneous. Right? Those narratives are not in line with what, with how God sees you. It's the basic thing I need to, that, that's just the way I can break it down. Yes. That's not how God sees you, no. right? Amen. The seed that has been planted through the spirit of abandonment, mm. amen, can cause you to walk out or step out of a thing that's good for you. Oh my God. Mm. My God. My God. Right? Mm -hmm. He goes on to say, the spirit of rejection 
causes you to build walls around you in all of your relationships. Mm. All right? And if I'm standing here and I have a wall here, I have a wall here, I have a wall here, and I have a wall here, I'm in prison. Yeah, right, right. Oh, my God. It doesn't affect the people directly out there. Who is it affecting primarily? It's affecting the one that's that's in the walls. You know? And so we now have to get to a place where we have to have the anointing of God. Get it down because only the anointing can do it. Get down deep, deep into the root. Into the root of these things that we carry over the years, amen, and we have church as usual. And pretend like it's not happening. And then you wonder why. When something small happens, you're not able to cope. It's because there are some uh, there's some unfinished business on the inside that the spirit of the anointing and the anointing of God has to root up. It's got to get it root and stem. It can't just pluck the limbs off. It's got to get 